Welcome to our podcast on shared ownership. I have with me uh, Steve Scola of Merlin Housing Society. Steve, I am buying a shared ownership flat in London. Quite frankly, it is all I can afford, but I really need to have some idea of what I am letting myself in for. Tell me what I should know about shared ownership. Hi Nick, well thanks for asking me. Um... Shared ownership, well, it was originally a bridge to full ownership for people who were sort of on the edge of affordability, so to speak, people who uh, couldn't quite afford to buy in the private market, but uh, shared ownership offered them that opportunity to get a stake in the property market. Uh, it allows you to buy a share of the equity, that the value of the home, and pay a rent on the share that you don't own. Obviously, the share that you do buy, you have to pay a mortgage for. Shares are usually between 25% and 60%, depending upon what you can afford. Uh, and often the percentage is set by the local planning authority or maybe by the landlord, uh, it depends. And then as your circumstances change and hopefully improve, uh, you get the opportunity to buy further shares, obviously at a current market value. And then as you staircase, as it's called, as you buy those further shares, the rent is reduced because uh, the share you own is obviously smaller. Um, increasingly, shared ownership is seen now as a tenure type in its own right. And there is a growing and quite vibrant market in buying and selling partially owned homes. I know there are companies now opening up to who specialise in that market. Now before you buy, you'll be asked to sit an affordability test to make sure that you can afford the product, make sure you can pay the mortgage, pay the rent, pay any service charges there may be, and of course continue to live. There's no point moving into a spanky new home if you can't afford to go out and have a life as well. Um, and it's also there to stop applicants who can afford to buy privately as well. The idea is not to give people another home or a, an investment property, but to make that, you know, make that bridge a reality. You'll be sold a lease, whether you buy a house or a flat. Uh, a lease is a marketable asset, uh, but like other leasehold situations, you don't own the home that you live in, but you do own a right to occupy and use the property for a period of time. Uh, in shared ownership, 99 years is often the convention. Uh, but that will be subject to what the lease says. So other terms may apply, other periods of, of uh, years may apply. Uh, when you bought that lease, repairs will normally be your responsibility. Although if you do buy a flat, the landlord will normally be responsible for the fabric and structure of the building and any communal parts. Uh, normally you'll pay for any communal repairs through your service charges. If you buy a shared ownership house, then all of the repairs to the whole of the property will usually be your responsibility. The leasehold ownership of a flat usually relates to everything within the four walls of the flat, including floorboards, plaster of the walls and ceiling, but that does not normally include the external or structural walls. And the structure and common parts of the building and the land it stands on are usually owned by the freeholder, who is normally the landlord. The freeholder is responsible for the maintenance and repair of the building, and the costs for this are again recoverable through the service charges and will be billed to the leaseholders. Uh, finally, the land will also be responsible for insuring the building, uh, but you again could, uh, are responsible for taking out contents insurance for your belongings and possessions. It's a, a fine distinction, but one that sometimes eludes some people. Thanks, Steve. You mentioned that um, a rent is paid on the share that uh, I will not be owning. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the rent. Well, the rent is usually a monthly charge. Um, it's a fixed percentage of the share retained. Uh, by the landlord. I mean, for example, if your home that you're buying is valued at £200,000 and you're buying a 40% share, that's £80,000, and the landlord's share is 60%, which is £120,000. Normally, the um, rent percentage is something like 2.75. It's normally a maximum 3% of the share retained by the landlord. So in the instance I've just quoted, £120,000, 2.75% of that is 3300 Divide that by 12 and you get a rent of £275 per calendar month. Rent increases are normally detailed in the lease and it's usually an annual increase based on the retail price index, often plus something like 0.5%. And this is usually applied in a particular month, sometimes September, sometimes in November. Again, it will depend what the lease says and normally that rent increase will be applied from the start of the financial year, the, uh, the following April. Uh, you'll also, should mention that you'll also have a service charges to pay. Um, these are not normally a, a full charge, but they're not normally apportioned according to the percentage of ownership either. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned earlier about staircasing. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? 
Yeah, this is the term used for buying additional shares in your home. Uh, each share you buy will reduce the rent payable until you staircase up to 100% ownership when you'll pay no rent, apart from, of course, from any ground rent there may be. When you uh, buy a house uh, in this way, you'll be granted the freehold ownership. But with a flat, of course, you'll still be granted a lease. And uh, although you'll pay no rent, you'll still have the service charges to pay. Uh, it's worth noting that some landlords may offer reverse staircasing, sometimes called down casing. So should you encounter any problems with your ownership, uh, they will let you reduce the share you own. This will obviously increase your rent, but in equivalent terms allow you to reduce your mortgage. Uh, again, it's worth checking with your landlord for this and any other way they may have to help you should you encounter any problems. Thanks, Steve. Uh, what is the mortgage protection clause and should it concern me? Well, the mortgagee protection clause, uh, or the MPC, is, is a clause in your lease and it's mainly aimed at lenders. Uh, essentially, it's an attempt to say to lenders that they should they have to repossess the property and sell it to recover their loan, then any costs that they've incurred that they don't recover through the sale will be met by the landlord. So it, it's a form of indemnity from the landlord to lenders, and the idea is to encourage more lenders into the shared ownership market. Uh, hopefully, you will benefit indirectly by having a better choice of loan and better choice of lender. Thanks, Steve. Now, suppose circumstances change and I have to live elsewhere but I want to keep hold of the flat, can I sublet it? You'll need to check the terms of the lease first and first of all. Um, most shared ownership leases in my experience have a prohibition on share, subletting. Uh, this is because most social landlords um, want to prevent shared ownership from becoming another tool for buy to let landlords. Um, if the lease does not allow subletting, then I'd suggest that you approach your landlord and ask if they'll allow it anyway. Some landlords do have a policy that will allow a short-term sublet for specific reasons. So if you have to go abroad temporarily for a job or to take care of a, an aging relative, um, your landlord may allow you to do that for a short period of time. Thank you. Now, what if I need to extend the lease? Well, the good news is that there is a statutory right for leaseholders to buy an extension to the terms of the lease. But the bad news is that shared owners who have not staircased to 100% ownership are currently excluded and the right doesn't apply. However, many landlords, and that includes Merlin Housing Society, do operate a discretionary scheme and will allow shared owners to extend. So again, it's worth checking with your landlord to see if they will uh, allow you to do that. Thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to mention to us about shared ownership? Well, there's the issue of the, uh, the payment of stamp duty land tax, or SDLT, and this is a little unusual for brand new shared ownership leasehold properties. On the resale of an existing lease, SDLT is paid on the premium, the sale price. But on the grant of a new lease, it's paid on a formula based on the premium and the annual rent if the annual rent exceeds £600. Therefore, SDLT may be payable for a new build, even though the threshold for paying SDLT is above the initial sale price. Because of this, the shared ownership lease must provide a clause offering the leaseholder an option to pay SDLT on either the initial sale price and the rent or on the full market rent of the property. The thresholds for the payment of SDLT change on a regular basis and any prospective purchaser of a new shared ownership property should take advice from their conveyancer or use the HM Review and Customs SDLT online calculator, which is uh, available on, uh, online, of course. The other thing I'd mention is that the right of preemption or the, the right to, uh, of the landlord to require you to sell the share back to the landlord it, it may well be a term of the lease. The shared ownership leases often have a requirement that the landlord can nominate a purchaser. The purchase price will be determined by an independent surveyor appointed by the landlord and they then have a period of time, usually a month or two months, to sell the property on. If they fail to do so, then you're free to go back to the open market normally and sell. In general terms, I would strongly urge you to read your lease, have a copy and make sure you, you know your obligations and the landlord's. Uh, if you need further advice, ask your solicitor to talk you through the main and most important clauses. And of course, should you need further advice later on in your ownership, don't hesitate to contact Lease. Uh, most housing associations also have specialist teams, um, home ownership teams or leasehold teams, uh, and they may well produce handbooks or newsletters. They may indeed have carried out the handover visit when you first moved in and showed you where things like the... Uh, consumer unit is and so on and so forth. So I suggest again get to know them and get to have a good relationship with them and with your lender because they may be able to help you later on should you have problems. And do if you do hit problems in payments in particular, don't suffer in silence. Your home will be at risk. So I would suggest you contact the lender, contact your uh, landlord and talk to them and see what help they can offer. 
Before you purchase, I'd suggest you take independent legal advice, get a good solicitor involved, and finally, good luck with your purchase. Uh, thank you very much, Steve, and thank you very much.